Hi, my name is John Thomas. I'm a physical therapist. I just got back from a bike ride, had a glass of chocolate milk as per my friend and registered dietitian, Melissa Mathis. Now I'm going to work on a little bit of stretching. Any cyclist that I've ever worked on, across the board, they all have tight hip flexors. Many times I see them for back pain, hip issues, knee issues, but when I do a flexibility assessment, their hip flexors are always tight. What I also see is a syndrome called lower cross syndrome. This is where you have muscle tightness and weakness in a cross pattern that can often end up being problematic and causing symptoms. What I see is tightness in the hip flexors and the erector spinae, weakness in the abdominal muscles and glutes. Many of us have office jobs, so we're sitting all day in front of the computer, we drive to work, and then if you're a cyclist, you're on the bike. Over time, from being in that flexed position, the hip flexor muscles become tight. So what I like to do after a bike ride, try to work on loosening up those muscles. You can get on the foam roller, roll back and forth, side to side, try to find any of adhesions or tightnesses, you can work your way starting at the top, the hip flexors, down to the quadricep muscles, you can roll over onto the IT band, the hamstrings, the glutes, and even the calf muscles. Following a little bit of that tenderization process from the foam roller, you can stretch the muscles. The first stretch is called the hand up stretch. This really opens up the hip try to work on stretching out that hip flexor after you've been on the foam roller to loosen it up. If this position doesn't cause you to feel stretchier, you can back up to a wall, to a couch, fence, put your knee all the way up to the wall, the foot is bent so it's almost touching your bottom, bring the opposite leg forward and you slowly come into an upright position to where you really feel that opening up. And it's definitely tight right now from that bike ride. You can add this hand up, really open it up, hold it for about a minute or two, just really open it up, alternate it to the other side. Because we're in this position of flexed all day, the next thing to do to open things up is get into a bridged position. Line your back, lift your hips up. Tighten the glutes and then slowly lower. Now we're going the total opposite of flexed position. Now you're opening it up, which is really good to help stretch out the hips as well, open up the hip extensors, strengthening the glutes. If you want to get a little more specific to cycling, what you can do these are little furniture uh, movers, sliders. You can get into uh, socks on a um, hardwood floor. And then you can go from that same bridge position, squeezing the glutes, because remember in that lower cross syndrome, weakness in the glutes and the abdominal muscles, tightness in the hip flexors and low back. We're bridging up, and then you can get specific into cycling, pedaling strokes. Many of the cyclists I work with are quadricep dominant. They have weakness in their glutes and hamstrings. This really forces you to fire those glutes and hamstring muscles. While you're in that extended position, opening up, getting out of that flexed posture. Last one is you're in a plank position where you're targeting the abdominal muscles, making sure your back isn't sagging in or hinging, and then you're doing a mountain climber. Knee to elbow. And what you really want to watch for as your knee's coming up, that it's staying nice and straight. You don't want it to deviate in or out. Think about when you're cycling. <laughs> straight like pendulums or pistons, up and down. Well, you're hitting your abdominal muscles and you're reinforcing motor or movement control, keeping those knees straight not allowing them to crash in or out. Those are the exercises today to help with 
preventing that lower cross syndrome. Again, opening up or stretching hip flexors, erector spinae, strengthening glutes, abdominal muscles. Thanks.